Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you a brief overview of lesson planning with specially designed instruction. And afterward, um, we can meet up and thought partner and discuss how to plan for this in our lessons. So um, our why as an SEC department is through specially designed instruction in the least restrictive environment, students with disabilities will have access to a rigorous curriculum that is meaningful, challenging, and is aligned to grade level standards. So one way that we are going to achieve that meaningful, challenging curriculum that's aligned to grade level standards is by planning for SDI in our classrooms. I'm not going to review our norms because we are not meeting live. So our learning target for today is by the end of this session, you'll be prepared to start collaborating with colleagues to plan explicit and systematic specially designed instruction that targets students' IEP goals and objectives and provides access to standards-based instruction. I say start because this is really going to be a process that is um, likely a year-long process. It will take a lot to be totally proficient in this area. So first I wanted to briefly review what is SDI. SDI, here's the um, definition that I've been working with with the SEC department. Specially designed instruction is instruction that is more urgent, more intensive, more relentless, more precisely delivered, more highly structured and direct, and more carefully monitored than for procedural fidelity and effects. So you can think of specially designed instruction as that top tier of instruction, like this is the most urgent, the most intensive. You can see those words that I've italicized for you. Um, and if we were meeting live, we'd do a little activity, but because we're not, I'm going to move on. I just want you to think about those words and what kind of stands out to you in that definition. Because it should be very different than what your gen ed colleagues are planning for. So your gen ed colleagues are planning um, for their gen ed students, but as SEC teachers, we really need to be thinking about how are we addressing these other components of SDI. So how do we plan? What do we need first? We should be looking at data. Data should drive every instructional decision we make. Data we can look at. There's some examples on the left there. Um, but you also need to consider the content you're covering, those grade level standards. You need to be considering your students' IEP objectives, their accommodations, their areas of need, but not only targeting their deficits, but also looking at their strengths that you can leverage in your lessons. For co-teachers, you're also going to want to be thinking about the model that you're going to use, such as parallel teaching, alternative station teaching, etc. So here's an example of some student data. This is a student of mine last year. Um, so he's a fifth grade student. And we can see that his, based on his BAS um, levels or FMP, whatever you call it, he is reading at about a third grade level. Um, and then his iReady scores are slightly decreased in reading. It's showing up at a second grade. Um, however, his attention problems from his psychological that you see there could be impacting his iReady performance. So his iReady math is um, he grew from grade three to grade four over the course of the year that we were in school. Um, and you can see his GMAS scores from the year prior. So I want you to think about looking at his current data, looking at his strengths and looking at his weaknesses from his psychological, we want to question, you know, how can we plan for instruction to address this student's needs? I've linked here a reading example, um, which I'll give you time to look at once you go through this presentation on your own. And then I want you to be questioning how that plan has the evidence of those components. The plan that I've linked has um, some methodologies that we're going to talk about in just a moment. So for resources, um, what do we already have that's going to support us in this work? You have your grade level PLCs. 
Those are so important to your planning because working with your gen ed colleagues is going to show you how to appropriately cover the grade level standards and how to push the rigor for your children. Using standards mastery framework, especially the vertical alignment maps, are going to help you close the gaps for your kids. If you're working with a grade level standard and your kids are not approaching proficiency, you can go back and look at the year prior or a couple years prior and see how do those priority standards align? What gaps do I need to close before they can access the grade level standard? Also, the data in your students' IEPs, their progress reports, their psych evaluations, um, and any other performance data like common formative assessments, those are going to help you plan for how to address unique learners' needs. So in special ed, we have um, high leverage practices, which basically just means they're research-based and they are proven to be effective for special educators. And HLP 12 is systematically designed instruction toward a specific learning goal. And I really think about this when I think about SDI. So I'll give you just a moment to pause and read this um, description. Okay, so this is a long description, but I want you to consider that um, in reaching our learners' goals, we're often thinking about their objectives, but we also want them to have those grade level goals. Um, you can set goals with iReady. You want them to be approaching grade level and approaching mastery. We, we really want to have some positive um, attitudes and talk about how much our students can achieve because they truly can. So some methodologies that I'm going to be teaching you more about this year, but I wanted to give you kind of a sneak peek is um, one is SRSD, which is self-regulated strategy development. And I have a link here to learn more. And I'm going to review that in just a moment. And then one is CRA, which is um, stands for concrete representational abstract. And this is something that you'll be using in math a lot. It helps develop that conceptual understanding for our students and push them forward. I've linked a picture here of um, a kindergarten standard, I mean single digit addition, and how it can be shown with concrete based 10 blocks, representational, which is typically a pictorial representation, and then abstract is your algorithm or your expression. I've also linked a video of how to teach composite volume, which is a fifth grade standard, using the same methodology. So steps to SRSD. I want you to think about this as a, like a long-term kind of methodology. This is not done in a day. This might be developed over the course of a couple of weeks. So you first want to develop your student's background knowledge, which goes back to that high leverage practice um, definition. You want to discuss the strategy with your children, model it. You want them to start to memorize it. Then you're going to support it until they establish independent practice. So it's a gradual release. Um, it starts out very intensive and then gradually releases them to independent practice. Here's an example of um, one that I did last year with fractions, and I have up at the top my vertical alignment map that I used to plan. So I started with, um, you know, the gaps that they're experiencing from grades three and four. So um, you can see here that the duration is one to three weeks. So this was in my lesson plans for a few weeks, even though I also included, of course, what I'd be doing specifically in my small groups. So I'm going to give you a moment to pause and read through this. All right, so you can see how this plan um, gradually releases students to independent practice. It's trying to close the gaps for them. Um, and I've put in some key activities that I'm going to use, the materials I'm going to use, etc. Also, in your lesson plans, you want to be planning for data collection, the bane of everyone's existence, I'm sure. Um, but we do want to be purposeful in the content we deliver and the instructional methodologies we select. We want to work smarter, not harder. 
we want to find ways to integrate these tasks together. So when you are writing your IEP objectives this year, please, please, please work with me to understand how can you write objectives that you can collect during instruction. We don't want to be making data collection time a thing. We want this to be a seamless experience for our kids and for us because it's going to make your life so much easier. So you want to be thinking how can you plan for tasks that can cover content, close the gaps, and lead to IEP data. So we can definitely plan together for that. Um, one of the last things I'm going to show you is just considerations for remote learning in your plans. You, of course, want to still be establishing a positive classroom environment and work on those relationship building tasks with your, with your students. Um, and then directions and expectations really need to be verbal and visual. You can create just a little slide that shows, reminds your students of expectations each day and shows them directions for the tasks that they're going to be doing. You want to increase engagement. A lot of our students are comfortable turning their camera off, um, not answering, waiting for others to respond in the chat before they respond. So um, there are strategies to help with that. One strategy is cold calling. I know some kids will need a little um, prep beforehand, like so-and-so, I'm going to call on you next. But cold calling really does create equity in who is participating and responding gives everyone an opportunity to do so, and also gives you an opportunity to hear everyone. You can adapt things like turn and talk, um, think peer share for a virtual environment. I can show you how to do that if you're interested. And then also, when you have students respond in the chat, you can say something like, okay, I want everyone to type your answer in the chat, but do not hit enter until I tell you to go. You can give them some think time that way, and the students who usually rely on their peers for answers will have to have it ready before you say go. Also, um, if you are recording asynchronous videos, you want to purposefully plan some pause time in. Um, I tried to model that a bit in here when I asked you guys to read longer slides, but you do want to model um, or show your students how to pause and do an activity such as writing. You can also integrate some asynchronous activities into your synchronous instruction, for example, saying, okay, we're all going to go read XYZ now. Um, I'm going to stay on and watch you read. I want everyone to take five minutes and read this passage or, um, or have them do another activity. A lot of you have been doing that already with iReady participation, um, but you can do it with other activities such as reading, just like you would do in uh, a whole group in a class, you know, having them read something while you sit on the carpet and question or conference with a couple of students. So I know this was really quick, um, very brief, quick and dirty PD overview. Um, but if you have questions, if you have something you want to start on, this is a lot, a lot of content. So um, my advice to you would be to pick a bite sized little chunk that you want to begin working on. So maybe in your lesson plans, you want to just start, you know, adding in their accommodations, or maybe you want to purposefully plan for data collection. Maybe you need to add in grade level standards and you're not sure how to do that yet because your students' deficits are um, kind of at the forefront of your mind. So if you want support and how to do any of those things, please, please, please reach out. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to, you know, grow our instructional practices and our planning practices. So reach out if you need me. Otherwise, thank you. Well, I think everyone should need something because this is very difficult to do all of this at once. So please reach out with just kind of like a little bite-sized piece that you would like to start working on, and I will be here to support you always. Thank you.